This was an unusual, low frequency, high risk type of a call that we responded to where a large sinkhole had swallowed up two vehicles and we had to make a very dynamic rescue. When we arrived on scene, there were two people that we were immediately met with that already were able to safely get out. However, inside on the car that was beneath the other car were two people that had to be rescued. This was beyond scary for them to be driving down a dark road, windshield wipers going full tilt, and then to sink into the ground, to be trapped, not be able to get out, and then to have another vehicle fall and land on top of them, further trapping them. So we quickly realized that we needed to make a dynamic rescue. Ideally, we would like to put up some uh, protection, an edge protection around the area, but we didn't have that luxury due to how fast the water was still pouring in the hole. The asphalt was cracking and shifting the vehicles were continuing to roll. So what ended up having to happen was a high angle rope rescue, which is when we use our large trucks that you'll see driving throughout Los Angeles that have the white aerial ladder, where we lifted that up and put that over the hole and had a firefighter don a harness. And then we strategically were able to lower them into this hole, secure that door, grab a patient and pull them out to safety and then repeat that. If it were not for the outstanding job that our firefighters did, really putting safety aside for themselves, putting themselves in harm's way to rescue those patients, they likely would not have survived. And that hole has only exponentially grown and has become a cavern easily 10 times what it was the night when we were first here. But dealing with the emergency management, there's often simply four phases of it. It's the preparedness, the response, the mitigation, and the recovery. The fire department is heavily involved in usually the response and mitigation where we go out there and solve the problem. Now that this has been days, it's turning a little more into the recovery where we lean on other city partners and we all come together as a group to determine whose ground is this actually on? What other uh, agencies can come in to assist from street services, Department of Transportation, Bureau of Engineering, and the list goes on and on and on of all these other partners that come together to say, hey, how can we, one, ensure that there's no other individuals that could come into harm's way. And then how do we repair this? Is there water lines? Are there sewer lines? Are there uh, internet lines that need to be repaired and to get the vehicles out? So this is the long tail effect of, a, of an incident where we move to the recovery phase and all city agencies come together. Many people are surprised to learn that there's actually 6,000 to 9,000 water emergencies that lead to deaths every year in the United States. And the scary part of that statistic is that one third of those deaths are would-be rescuers. So we don't want people who are well-intentioned to put themselves in harm's way, whether that's someone floating down the LA River or going into a hole, call 911, know where your location is so we can get to you right away, and we'll come in and mitigate that with a team of well-skilled and trained professionals. We also don't want people driving through flooded areas where you cannot see the pavement beneath you. That could be an open hole, you don't know.